Welcome to Easy and Different Radiology. I'm Dr. Osama Ibrahim, and this is your channel, the Easy and Different Radiology, which is talking about all things related to the radiology. Actually, today I decided to start a new set of gastroenterology disorders. The first video about this uh, will talk about the vascular disorders which may be missed during CT abdomen examination. This video today is going to help you to expand your understanding about uh, the missed vascular disorder like SMA syndrome uh, or splenic artery aneurysm, uh, median adequate ligament syndrome. I will discuss uh, uh, eight cases from my daily work cases, which I find it in the previous two months. So let's share this uh, knowledge with uh, you and let's start our presentation. The learning objective from my presentation today is to highlight uh, uh, on the abnormality or vascular abnormalities during examination of CT. And I will discuss eight cases, as I mentioned, the SMA syndrome, the first one, pelvic congestion syndrome. Then I will talk about splenic artery aneurysm, as well as median adequate ligament syndrome and mat cracker syndrome, splenic arteriovenous malformation. Also, I have one case and I will discuss it with you. Uh, then I will talk about the uh, uh, SMA syndrome in different uh, two patients, another two different patients. Uh, so let's start our presentations and check these images, how to discriminate it and recognize and differentiating these pathologies from each other. So let's start our presentation. So let's start our presentations by uh, the uh, first case, uh, SMA syndrome. Uh, this uh, yeah, image from my daily work cases, uh, uh, it is a Sagittarius formatted image CT with arterial venous, uh, arterial uh, uh, series. Uh, this one is the aorta and this one is the SMA, which is representing superior mesenteric artery. Uh, between the SMA and the aorta, there are two important structures. This structure is the left renal vein and the third part of the duodenum. Uh, this red one. So these structures, if the distance between SMA and aorta is narrowed, resulting in compression of these structures and uh, at that time the manifestations will start it and the patient will start to complain. This image from my dear work is, as I mentioned, the third part of the duodenum uh, is uh, suspended by the ligament of treats. So any abnormality in this ligament shortening or any abnormality resulting in uh, 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 abnormal relationship between SMA and the aorta and can be caused the SMA syndrome. The normal relationship between the SMA and the aorta is uh, uh, 28 to 65 degree as an angle and 10 to 28 mm as a distance according to that side. Uh, in this axial image CT, we can, without contrast, we can discriminate the aorta, the IVC, and SMA here, uh, uh, SMV, superior mesenteric vein, beside the head of the pancreas. And as we see here, the SMA is indenting on the third part of the duodenum uh, between it and the aorta, and resulting in compression in the duodenum in this uh, area. Uh, and uh, this compression can result in uh, symptoms of the patient and the complaint, and at that time is described as an SMA syndrome. From my experience in uh, the work, the SMA syndrome should be uh, examined or should be diagnosed when the patient is complained. So, uh, this is another image from the ultrasound image also I did in uh, my facility. And uh, this uh, showing the relations between SMA and the aorta. The distance is decreased. And this is the same patient CT examination done with arterial face, which is showing the decreased angle between SMA and aorta, which measure 20 degree here. And this 20 degree is less than normal. So it considered as SMA syndrome as a patient is complaining from vomiting and uh, uh, fullness when eating and like this. If there are any manifestations like this with uh, decreasing angle between SMA and the aorta, we consider SMA syndrome 
uh, in this case the angle is 20 degree. The same patient also, uh, uh, this image also from my daily work cases, which is showing the third part of the deuterium compressed between the SMA and the aorta. At that time, this is an uh, uh, image in arterial face, so uh, the arterial face can see the uh, aorta is opacified, however, the IVC is still not opacified, the cortex of the kidney is opacified, the medulla still. So, this is the arterial phase showing the compressions between SMA and aorta and uh, on the third part of the duodenum. So, this uh, uh, is sufficient to diagnose the SMA syndrome. The distance can be measured here and the distance actually measuring 5 mm is normal between 10 mm to 28. So, this uh, measurement is abnormal and diagnosed the case as an SMA. Again, this is the final image from my uh, case, uh, and uh, this uh, is showing the SMA compressing the left renal vein and the third part of the duodenum, and uh, this is which is the cause the patient to complain. The degree is 20, and this is diagnosing SMA syndrome. Uh, back to the uh, second case of the, uh, my presentation today about the vascular uh, disorder. This case is a pelvic congestion syndrome. This is a coronal image of uh, uh, CT study, which is showing the left uh, vein, left ovarian veins is dilated and appeared like this in the image. And uh, this uh, measuring about 10 millimeter, normally it should be less than 6 uh, millimeter. The left ovarian vein drains in the left renal vein. And uh, this is the delayed image, which is showing the ureter, left ureter, and the left ovarian vein barrier to it. And uh, this is also a beer dilated even uh, in this delayed uh, phase. Presence of these dilatations of the left ovarian vein with patient to complain from the pelvic pain uh, is diagnostic for the pelvic condition syndrome. So also uh, uh, for that reason, they don't uh, miss uh, the, that uh, sign. Uh, for diagnosing the pelvic condition syndrome patient complained from the pelvic pain. And this is another image for the same case to pelvic condition syndrome in the sagittal view, left ovarian vein, which appear dilated. And this is also again from my daily work cases in the previous two months only. It measuring about 10 millimeters in the pelvis, uh, uh, we can detect the varices of the veins uh, in the parametrium region, and this is also another sign of confirming diagnosing of the pelvic congestion syndrome. As I mentioned before, normal ovarian vein should be less than six millimeter in diameter to diagnose as a normal. Uh, however, here uh, this is 10 millimeters, and patient complains. So at that time, you can diagnose pelvic congestion syndrome. And you can pick up the cause of the patient complaints and starting the uh, medication. And this is another image from the same case, also from a daily work cases, which showing the barometrium veins dilatations. All these yellow dots refer to the dilated veins in the uterus, in both sides of the uterus. And this is the renal bladder in that coronal CT image, a reformatted image, diagnostic for the pelvic congestion syndrome. So don't miss pelvic congestion syndrome as a big cause for the pelvic pain, particularly in females in young age. So third case in, from my presentation today is the splenic artery aneurysm. And the splenic artery aneurysm also can be easily missed if you find this uh, uh, abnormality in the CT in coronal image. Don't miss it because it appeared like calcifications. Uh, however, uh, uh, this is arterial phase because you can see the cortex and the medulla can differentiate it from each other. So don't uh, consider this calcification until you check up the other images of the patient in other phases like delayed phase and venous phase. So uh, if we returning to the 
other phases we can find that in the venous phase this uh, mural calcification uh, rounding the splenic artery so it considered as a splenic aneurysm which filled uh, by contrast completely in the arterial phase so this case also from daily work cases in the previous ones and can uh, diagnosed as a splenic artery aneurysm because it filling in arterial phase and washed in the uh, both venous and the delayed phase with mural calcifications it can be confirming diagnosis of the arterial origin of the lesions and this was a case of the splenic artery aneurysm also detected so vascular disorders should be examined and should be searching for it during examination of CT abdomen which can also helping in uh, physicians for treating the patient the fourth case is the median adequate ligament syndrome and uh, median adequate ligament syndrome also uh, can be uh, detected by compressing on the celiac trunk as you know the aorta have uh, three main branches arising from it and this is the celiac artery celiac trunk and superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery which are arising from the anterior aspect of the aorta in this sagittal view or the sagittal reformatting image ct so ct in the arterial phase we can see the artery and this is the three main arteries look always at that regions of the origin of the celiac trunk if it is compressed like this with dilatations both stenotic dilatation and the making a hook sign this is which is called hook sign uh, uh, so don't uh, forget to uh, or don't miss diagnosing the median adequate ligament syndrome or celiac trunk compression syndrome Again, this case from my daily work is also in the previous uh, 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 couple of months and also in coronal image you can detect the uh, uh, median arcuate ligament which uh, uh, also compressing the origin of the celiac trunk at uh, that region in the arterial phase. So this diagnostic for the median arcuate ligament syndrome. Actually, the median adequate ligament syndrome to diagnose it is it controversial and uh, uh, don't diagnose it until patient have symptoms because uh, sometimes in asymptomatic patient discovered incidentally in CT, at least in CT examinations when you examine it, you should uh, uh, mention it as uh, it may be a cause or the physicians need it as uh, information when dealing or when uh, treating the patient because uh, it is controversial as mentioned according to that site uh, for a uh, uh, symptomatic uh, patient uh, the thickness of the median adequate ligament syndrome should be less than four millimeter and uh, this is uh, according to the sat sites four millimeter is uh, borderlines for diagnostic of the abnormality in the median adequate ligament syndrome as uh, the second or uh, diagnostic for the syndrome uh, we diagnose it from the compression on the artery and after compression of the artery the symptoms can be appeared so always uh, 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 correlates between the patient clinical and symptomatic uh, status with the finding which can be detected in the CT. The case 5 is not cracker syndrome and not cracker syndrome is part from the compressions between the uh, uh, a superior mesenteric artery and aorta uh, if the distance between them is narrowed like this uh, case in the axial image also this from my daily work case you see the compression on the left renal vein the compression left renal vein resulting in dilatations of the proximal part of the veins and sometimes causing hematuria and left renal pain and uh, maybe this is the uh, only cause for the hematuria of the patient so if you can pick up it in the CT examination uh, without uh, contrast uh, or CT examination uh, when you did with or without contrast uh, you can helping in diagnosing that patient so left renal vein uh, appeared here compressed between the superior mesenteric artery and aorta which the distance between them is six uh, three millimeter only again this case from my daily work case and also in the sagittal image you can uh, discriminate that or recognize that narrowing between the SMA and the aorta and the angle here measuring 18, millim 18 uh, degree only so uh, this is abnormal because the normal angles should be starting from 28 degree 
So this uh, the compression on the left renal vein is called nutcracker syndrome at the time if the compression uh, 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 in the vein uh, not in the uh, third part of the duodenum. Uh, so this is another syndrome that can be missed also in the uh, uh, diagnosing uh, when we examine the CT abdomen for the patient. Uh, this is the same patient, case 5 of nutcracker syndrome, showing also the stomach which appear dilated in that coronal image and disease dilatations uh, referring to proximal or uh, referring to another obstruction in its outlet and the obstruction actually from that syndrome, nutcracker syndrome, which compressing both renal vein and also the third part of the duodenum resulting in SMA syndrome plus nutcracker syndrome. So uh, nutcracker syndrome only diagnosed when the left renal vein is compressed and uh, uh, resulting in symptoms for the patient like this uh, uh, case. The nutcracker syndrome, most common clinical manifestation of it is a left flank pain, as I mentioned, and hematuria, sometimes gonadal viruses. Uh, the, uh, in the absence of clinical symptoms, so we don't call it nutcracker syndrome, but call it nutcracker phenomena or nutcracker anatomy. So as I mentioned and always mentioned that always correlates between the clinical presentation uh, of the patient and the finding which you pick up because uh, uh, this is important for diagnosing or also for uh, mentioned the correct name of the pathology. Uh, so if you mentioned nutcracker phenomena, the physician understanding is that patient not complaining or if you mentioned nutcracker syndrome, so at that time this is very important and should be treated and should correct the, that narrowing between SMA and the aorta because it's causing uh, manifestations in the patient. The sixth case is a splenic AVM and this is uh, uh, my advice for uh, my colleagues and for, for uh, all So my friends here in uh, easy and different radiology and uh, uh, should you take care from any lesions in the spleen when examined by ultrasound this case from my daily work case and this uh, image showing a cystic lesion in the spleen uh, don't uh, uh, leave the patient without uh, uh, show the Doppler study on that lesion. The Doppler showing activity and there are efferent and efferent vessels for that lesions, which are confirming the diagnosis of AVM of the spleen, not only a cystic lesion. So always make the Doppler imaging on uh, any cystic lesions you find it in the spleen by ultrasound. Uh, so uh, uh, the Doppler can help you to differentiating cystic lesion from uh, AVM, which is a, a serious uh, pathology and should be take care from these lesions when dealing with it, uh, uh, even with surgery or with uh, trauma or uh, uh, or uh, you should at, at least tell the physician about the, that, le that lesion is not cystic lesions, not simple cyst, it is uh, uh, AVM in the spleen. SMA, as mentioned before, the, and the nutcracker syndrome they can be uh, uh, can be detected in the same patient if the compressions between SMA and the aorta resulting in compression on both vein and the third part of the duodenum. I think learning this way helping to know the pathology because uh, in uh, this uh, uh, way you see the compression in the left renal vein and dilatation of the proximal part and also compression on the third part of the duodenum. So you can uh, diagnose the nutcracker and uh, SMA syndrome uh, from this case, which can be seen in the same patient, the aortomesentric angle is 16 in this patient, and the aortomesentric distance is 4 uh, is 4.6. As you know, the normal uh, levels this is below the normal levels, and according to that side, SMA syndrome to be diagnosed should be reduced between uh, below 6 degree and below 2 uh, millimeter as a distance.
and this is case uh, showing SMA and nutcracker syndrome in uh, the same patient. And now I want to finish my presentations by uh, uh, another case of SMA syndrome, which is showing is uh, uh, two images, SMA syndrome and the normal, the two can discriminate the difference between SMA and, uh, and normal relation between SMA and the aorta. Uh, because uh, uh, if you use to look at this in uh, the CT examination of the abdomen, uh, always you uh, don't miss the SMA syndrome and you will go to the next step and measure the angle, measure the distance and check the stomach if it is dilated and uh, check the patient complaint if there are hematuria or like this. So uh, uh, you, you should discriminate it or recognize it first by your eyes like this case which is SMA syndrome and this case which is normal SMA and this celiac trunk arising from the anterior aspect of the aorta in the abdomen. Uh, in this patient the angle is 12 degree uh, and uh, this is the last case I presented. The conclusions or the message which I would to like to share it with my friends is, is always look at the vascular abnormality when examine CT abdomen and uh, it may be cause a chronic uh, patient pain, maybe the cause of the chronic patient pain like vomiting, nausea, uh, abdominal or pelvic pains or hematuria. So don't miss this. Uh, at the end of my presentation, uh, I hope I provide you with clear knowledge about uh, that issue. At the end, this is my reference and I would like to uh, finalize my presentation by thanking you for your attention and for your listening in the first presentation in the radiology in GIT, waiting you and with me in the next Sunday, wait for me next Sunday uh, for a new presentation in radiology in GIT. Thank you very much and goodbye.